Have you ever wanted to access something from inside your home network from outside your home network? This could be access to your computer or a NAS drive. It could even be hosting your very own web server or gaming server. Well, to do that, you're gonna to need to know about port forwarding. And that's exactly what we're gonna be covering in this video. But before we jump into that, there is a much better way to access computers and devices from inside your network remotely. And that's by using Twingate, who is today's video sponsor. Twingate provides secure and hassle-free access to your devices from anywhere in the world on any device. In the Zero Trust video I made, I used Twingate so that myself and my editor could remotely access my video files which sit on my NAS drive. All I had to do was deploy a Docker container somewhere in my network. This could be a virtual machine, a Raspberry Pi, or even an old computer. I was then able to connect my iPad and load my internal NAS drive. Not only was this very simple, I was able to specify exactly which device could be accessed and on which port number. I could even specify the security features a device must have before being allowed to access my NAS drive. This kept access to my network controlled and secure. It does this without the need to mess around with port forwarding, which can be a little bit risky. I'll show you what I mean by that at the end of this video. It's also very handy if you have an internet provider that doesn't allow port forwarding. The best part about using Twingate is it's completely free for up to five users. Use the link below in the description to get started. Okay, so before we talk about port forwarding, we first need to know what ports are and what they do. So let's take this computer for example. The computer will have an IP address. The IP address is like the postal address. It identifies the location of the computer on the network, so traffic can be sent there. But this computer could be running lots of different services and applications. For example, we might have enabled Remote Desktop Services, also known as RDS, to allow us to connect to this computer remotely. There may also be an FTP server for sharing files, or even a hosting application for hosting a website. Now this becomes a bit of an issue because the IP address gets the traffic to the computer, but how does the computer know if the traffic is destined for the RDS, the FTP server, or the web server? This is where ports come in. Port numbers identify the application or the service. Each will have their own port number assigned. Remote Desktop Protocol, or RDP, which is the protocol used for RDS, will use port number 3389. FTP will use port number 21. And the web server will use port 443. When the request is sent to the computer, not only will there be an IP address, but there will also be a port number. The computer will first check the IP address and once it confirms, yes, that's me, it will check the port number and then send that request to the correct application or service. So for example, if I want to attempt to remotely connect to a computer, I just open up the remote desktop connection, type in an IP address of the computer I want to connect to and hit the connect button. Now I have a packet capture software running in the background. And if I open that up, we can see not only does our connection attempt have an IP address or a destination IP address, it has a destination port number. And the destination port number is 3389, which if you remember is for remote desktop protocol. So you might be thinking, but how does the computer know which port number to use? Well, there is a list of the most common applications and the port numbers they use. These are called well-known ports. You don't technically need to use these exact port numbers, but they are the default ones. So now we know what port numbers are and how they direct requests to the correct application or service. There is a problem though. This only works within the local network, which is called the private network. The private network is not accessible through the internet. The only way the private network can communicate to the outside world is through a router. The router sits between the private network and the outside world. All traffic goes through here. The router will have two IP addresses. One is the private address, just like our device, and one is a public IP address, which is the one used to communicate across the internet. Let's take our remote desktop example from earlier, but this time try it remotely. To get the request to our network, it needs to be addressed to our router's public IP address. 
This is because the private IP addresses are not reachable from outside the private network. So the request is received by the router, which also includes the port number. What do you think will happen? Well, the router doesn't have any ports open, especially not RDP for remote connections. And it has no way of knowing that this request is actually destined for our internal computer. So it just drops the request. And this is exactly where port forwarding comes in. So to solve this problem, we need to tell the router what to do with these requests. Port forwarding is simply telling our router where to send a request based on the port number within the message. For example, we could configure a rule that says any traffic received using port number 3389 forward that traffic to our computer, which has the local IP address of 192.168.1.10. Now, if we were to receive the same remote desktop request across the internet, the router will look at the IP address, think, yes, that's me, and then look at the port number. The router would then check its port forwarding rules. It will see our rule and forward that request to the computer. So the traffic is forwarded based on the port number, hence the name port forwarding. Okay, so now we know what port forwarding is and how it works. Let's see this live and in action. Here I have a home computer. This computer is within a home network with a router as the gateway. Now, I want to be able to access this computer from outside of the home network, from anywhere in the world, in fact. So to represent this, I have another computer. This computer is currently outside of my home network and no port forwarding rules have been applied. So let's see what happens when I try to connect to my home computer. So first I'm gonna go over and press the start button and type in remote desktop and select remote desktop connection. Now I need to type in the computer's IP address. But remember, I can't use the home computer's private IP address because it's not reachable over the internet. Instead, I need to use the home router's public IP address. That's already here, it's 1.1.1.1. And then I hit connect. And as expected, it failed. The reason this failed is because we sent a connection request to the home router with a destination port of 3389. The router looked at this message and the port number and thought, that's my IP address, but I don't have that port open. And it dropped the request. So to fix this, we need to add a port forwarding rule. This rule will tell the router to forward the frame to our home computer instead of dropping the message. To do this, we're gonna to need to configure our router. So we're gonna to need to open our home computer to do this. To do this, we're gonna need the IP address of our router. Now, if you don't know this, just simply go to the start button, open a command prompt, type in IP config, and the default gateway will be the router's IP address. We'll take that IP address, we'll open a browser, and we'll just type it in. So 192.168.1.1, and press enter. Now you may need to log in here. If you don't know the credentials, look on the router itself. Sometimes it's written on there somewhere. If not, you can try Googling for default credentials. Or if your internet service provider gave you the router, try giving them a call. Now from here, the steps take will depend on the router. Now I'm using an open source router and firewall called PFSense. So for me, I just need to go up to firewall menu at the top, select NAT, which stands for network address translation. And then I have a section for port forwarding. Whichever router you have, you'll likely have something like port forwarding or NAT. You can always Google for the exact steps. As you can see, I have a rule already set up but it's currently disabled. The rule says any traffic from any source port destined to the WAN address with a destination port of 3389, so that RDP port, then forward to my computer at 192.168.1.5 and keep the same port. So let's turn this on and try that connection again. So I'll select it, hit the toggle button, and then apply my changes. So with that enabled, let's go back to our remote computer. Okay, so we're back at the remote computer and with a bit of luck, we're gonna close this and try that connection again. So this, remember, this is the home router's public IP address, or at least for this lab. 
hit the connect button and with a bit of luck pop in the password hit OK accept and yes we successfully have that remote connection I can minimize this and you can see the home router desktop right in front of us so what actually happened here well our computer sent the request to the router as before the router saw its own IP address and the destination port number then it realized I have a port forward rule for that and it sent the request to the home computer making our connection so that's it pretty straightforward concept and pretty easy to set up before you go out and start opening ports though there is a dark side to this that you need to know about your router and or firewall protects your network from the outside world. Now the outside world is full of hackers and bad guys looking to harm you, your network, your devices and your data. When you configure port forwarding, you are effectively poking holes in that protection, providing hackers a way to access your network. Now you might think that no one will target you and if you don't advertise your IP address anywhere, that you'd be safe. Well, you'd be wrong very very wrong the bad guys are constantly scanning the internet looking for open ports that they can take advantage of once a port is found they will try to get access to that service so in our example they will try to log into our home computer now once they get access they'll likely install malware which could steal or encrypt our data to show you this in the real world i've set up a simple honeypot now a honeypot is a computer designed to lure in the bad guys so we can see exactly what they tried to do. Here we're looking at all of the RDP activity in the last 24 hours. Remember RDP is the protocol used for remote desktop connections just like our example. As you can see there has been a lot of login attempts to this computer. Now if my password wasn't secure these login attempts could be successful. And it's not just remote desktop that's affected. Pretty much anything that you make public will be attacked, including things like SSH and even VPNs. So how do you protect yourself? Well, first try to minimize what you make public using port forwarding. Anything you do make public will become a target. Ensure you use strong passwords. 12 characters or more is ideal. This way, hackers will struggle to guess the right password. If you can, restrict who can gain access to your systems through the source IP address. However, this only really works if you have a static, non-changing IP address and you only want to access from set locations. Also, enable multi-factor authentication where you can. So even if the hackers do get your password, they need you to authorize it on your phone before they can gain access. But again, if you want to completely avoid the security risks with port forwarding though, Twingate provides the remote access you need while keeping everything secure without the need for port forwarding. The link for a free account is in the description. So that's it for port forwarding, a really useful tool that enables remote access to applications and services. However, it can be a little risky if not done correctly. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe. Support from you guys really helps this channel grow. Other than that, thank you for watching. When you configure port forwarding, you are effectively poking holes in that protection. That was a terrible attempt at poking a hole.